Hello, welcome to Furious Driving, and this, as you probably know, is my 2010 Mercedes W204 C-Class. Well, technically it's an S204 because it's a station wagon estate. It's one of the rare ones, it's a C250 and it's a manual, so it's a car I quite enjoy driving. However, it's time to do a couple of winterization things. First of all, I need to put the winter tyres back on there because it's very cold today. Driving back from my job yesterday, it was one and a half degrees in the middle of the day. Definitely time to get the winter rubber on. Secondly, one of the air vents is broken. These cars virtually never break, but sometimes stuff does eventually go. And one air vent has packed up about six months ago, and I'm finally gonna get around to changing it. Also, rather nigglingly, one of the rear number plate light bulbs doesn't seem to be working, but trying to change that on an estate compared to a saloon is apparently impossible and there are no guides anywhere on the internet or even in the handbook. So we'll have a look, but don't hold your breath on that one. Not much goes wrong on this generation of Mercedes. They're one of the most reliable cars you can buy for under five or 10,000 pounds, depending on the year and spec, of course. But yeah, virtually nothing ever breaks. And that is surprisingly easy. So quick how-tos for W204 owners. So a little while ago, the shiny adjustery bit fell off this driver's side air vent, which is quite an annoying thing. So although I managed to save the shiny bit that goes on the front and the little clip that goes on the back, despite spending a while with some tweezers and pliers, there was no way of bringing the two pieces back together in a way that would hold them forever and make the thing work anymore. So currently, up and down on my air vent, but nothing else, which is quite annoying, especially when the window's misting up over there or I'm getting numb fingers. Now the way this is held in, there's a couple of little clips on the left-hand side and then there are spring clips above and below that hold it tight in the dashboard. And you'll notice that there are little slots in the lower ones and the holes in the body of the thing that match up with them. So if you have the Mercedes special tool, which is a rod with a hook on the end, you can feed it through there, rotate it 90 degrees and pull the thing out. Or as anyone familiar with Rover P6s will know, a bit of bent wire coat hanger is pretty much the same as the factory tool. You are meant to use two at once, but one does seem to do the trick. Now I think some, um, some trim tools will definitely come in handy to help separate this all out without damaging anything. There we go. Sideways and out it comes. And there is a little connector on the bottom and that unhooks from there so it doesn't rattle and get caught or lost. So don't forget to put that back on there. when the new one goes in. So, with the wire now reconnected and hooked around his little hooks, this can slide back into that slot. Make sure, using your trim tool, this goes behind the instrument binnacle area. So the binnacle surround will pull slightly forward anyway. So you can get your trim tool in there, leave the two apart, and then get that underneath there. So then it can all slot back together. That goes into the right place that clips back in there. It's all just trim clips, so a bit of a firm thump from the palm of your hand or the heel of your thumb. And what do you know, functioning, working air vent again. Now also, I do have a problem with this number plate light not working. It has just been loose up until now. I could wobble it oh, today, I can't anymore. Maybe it has finally disconnected. And there are no instructions anywhere on the internet as to how to get to these on the estate version. There are convoluted ones to get to the sedan saloon version, but I thought maybe I could break the internet with some instructions on how you get into this one. Turns out I can't figure it out. I'm gonna have to pay someone to change a number plate light bulb. The number plate lights are an absolute pain to get out because instead of being a lens you can pop out or an easy thing you can access from underneath, you have to go in from inside and take off most of this trim to reach it. So firstly, the thing you must not do is go ahead and take out these two torque screws. That's not what you want to do. That'll cause your whole world to hurt, dismantling this whole handle area and not be what you want to be doing at all. The screws to get in here are actually really well concealed. You need to very carefully lever off the cover from the hand pull. Like this one I've just done a second ago. Gently get in there with a trim tool or a screwdriver with some tape on the end. Lever this off, don't break the clips. And inside here you'll find two little torque screws. You're meant to now prise off this lower cover of plastic trim, remove this carpeted area and take out this uh, window surround as well. And some people say you also have to go and undo 
or loosen at least, the windscreen wiper. This is quite a lot of work. So what you also can do is go back, ignore the proper rule, find yourself a Torx T25 and undo those two screws I just told you not to do. Get yourself a large flat bladed screwdriver and wrap, wrap some tape around it because you don't want to be marking your paint or your chrome work and then gradually gently get in there and just lever around the clips so you pop the clips undone. If you look through there, there's a clip just there, a clip around there, and by putting the tape around it, you're less likely to put any marks into the paint. So instead, I will jump straight to finding the uh, winter wheels, which unfortunately are behind all of my merch if you would like to make my life easier so I've got less merch so please go online and buy yourself either a Furious Driving Broken Rovers or Volvo t-shirt a uh, hat there are mugs around here somewhere as well but behind that lot there are some wheels so I can extract them heavy breathing thanks to extricating four wheels out of the garage now these are, what are they, General I think General Ultimax which have been with me for about three years now possibly even four years uh, across this car yeah I think it's only been on this car but every winter they come out. People think it's an expensive exercise getting a set of winter's wheels, but really because they last for three or four years and you're not using those tires for the same length of time, it actually doesn't cost anything at all over a long period of time, apart from the initial outlay of doing it once, but then long term. It's like buying a pair of good boots. It's the Sam Vimes theory of good boots. A poor person will spend everything he can on a $10 pair of boots and buy a $10 pair of boots every single year. A rich person will spend $50 on a pair of boots and 10 years later have the same pair of boots and be $50 up. It's kind of the same thing. Oh, I have noticed that my last minute frantic in the dark notation in the dirt has got the near side and offside mixed up because the rotations don't quite match up. And I did just notice what looked like some sidewall cracking starting to appear. So although there's certainly a season's worth of tread lift in these, I think I'll look into replacing these before the weather gets any worse. Now, if you're wondering why I take the trouble of changing these wheels over every winter time, it's for a very good reason. Cold weather tires are made with a softer compound which manages to grip in slippery conditions like black ice or even just when the road's a little bit slippery and greasy on a frosty morning. Not just when it's snowy, but when it is snowy, those chunkier, more aggressive grip patterns means I can actually get up the drive. There's a video I showed trying to get up the drive once in a four wheel drive car on summer tires and I couldn't do it. So for all round safety, this is why I change these wheels every year. Brakes are still looking pretty decent on this thing, so we can hang on to not changing them until the next year. So there you go, the old S204 gets another starring role in its own blog video. We've done the very important thing of changing this air vent so I can now be more comfortable. We've done the fairly important thing of putting winter tyres on so we can not crash and die. And we've managed to not to do even slightly the not massively important, but it does fail an MOT and put a warning on the dashboard every time we turn the car on rear number plate light, which is really quite annoying. I'm genuinely really surprised to find cracks in those sidewalls on these general tires after what, three years, four years, and most of the year, certainly through the hot summer, shiny bright bit, they've been indoors in the dark of the garage. So I'm genuinely surprised to find sidewall cracking in there. And they were stored properly in a tire stacking thing as well. So there's really no reason for that to have happened. And we are quite late in the season for buying winter tires now. So I'm gonna to have to have a bit of a hunt around and see what's available to replace them before the weather gets, well, it's quite nice and blue skied and lovely now. It was horrifically cold and thick ice on the car first thing in the morning. So who knows where that'll take us, but I'll, I'll start squirreling around and I'll let you know what I choose. As far as a running report goes, this car has now got just a few hundred miles shy of 130,000 miles on it. It's still running absolutely perfectly. It gets decent economy, it still rides brilliantly. It's a great all-round car to drive and being one of the very few manual C250s around, it's not a car I'm planning on getting rid of anytime soon. Even if I do go and get myself something electric as a local journey daily of some kind, like a cheap leaf or something to cut down fuel costs. I think I'll be hanging on to this one, finding somewhere to park it because it's something of a rarity in a unicorn. But there is one downfall with this car, one downside, one little niggle if you like, and that is a recall that's going on at the moment for the airbags. The Carter airbags, like what the ones that were killing people in Toyotas, are apparently in here. So not that you would believe it if you looked at the sidewalls of the front tires on the summer continentals we just took off, but I have been driving this quite carefully, honest, because there is a chance that these things will explode and fire shards of metal into the cabin if as a prang. So 
in a couple of weeks time this is booked into the local Mercedes main dealer to get the airbags taken out of the steering wheel and the dashboard and I don't know where else so I'm fascinated to know how they're going to take the entire dashboard apart and put it back together again without making any marks or damage if maybe get in from underneath somehow I don't know I wonder if they'll let me film it because that would be fascinating to see how they do that but it's also quite handy because apparently airbags have a shelf life of about 10 years this car is about 10 years old just over which means I have an all new set of airbags in this car good for another 10 years no warranty worries so maybe it's a good thing in the meantime though I'm going to try very hard not to crash right well I hope you've enjoyed the blog and I hope that was useful information on how to change this air vent with only minor haberdashery tools and as always if you've enjoyed this video please do hit like and subscribe and join me again next time when we're doing something completely different I mean seriously like taking the head off a Rover K series or welding a Mercedes completely different to this